Hello everybody, Terry Terry, back again with another video. Oh boy, oh boy, we have the last tournament of the year where the eight best tennis players in the world will anticipate and compete to lift that big, big title in the NITU ATP Tour Finals in London. By the way, which will be held for the last time in London, which has been, which has been held in the last 12 years. We all know that from next year, in 2021, will be held in Italy, Turin, Turin. So now, guys, we have eight players competing. We all know we who follow tennis how this works. We have two groups. One of the groups where Djokovic is, they have called it uh, Tokyo 19, 1970, which I don't, I don't, I'm not getting why they have called it this name. Well, uh, uh, so I'm not getting why they are, why they have called before they used to call it the Bjorn Borg or John McEnroe group. This time they are calling it with series. Anyway, Djokovic is in that Tokyo group, 1970, and Nadal is on the other group, London, 2020. So, we're gonna do like this, guys, my tennis friends all around the world. We have only eight players, and you who follow my channel, uh, you know that when it is, when, when majors are around, I go and name eight players who I believe all can win the title. I go from the eighth place, the least likely to win it, and the first player, the most likely to win it. And as closer, as closer you come to that first place, like the second place, like the third place, you are also as most likely to win it, but obviously number one player is the player that I believe the most and the player that I pick for the winner. So, you know how this works. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this tournament, even though that we have only all eight players, but I think it can be fun to do it. Uh, because even though we have only eight players, obviously the last player on this list, on number eight place, is the player I don't believe, is the player I, I don't believe he can win it, to be, because he's the last. Uh, we don't have more than eight players, and the player I will put as my number eight place obviously is the player that I don't believe he will win it. And probably you guys uh, can guess who I will put as who that player will be on that number eight place. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this list. On my number eight place, my friends all around the world. When I see all these players, when I see all these names, it is one player that I definitely, absolutely cannot see him winning it. All the other seven, I will not be surprised if, if, all the, if one of the other seven wins it. Absolutely not. Because they are the world number one to the world number seven. But on my number eight place, and it, it is not only about the ranking, even though that this player is the world number eight, uh, it is not about the ranking. Because we know that the player who is world number six, six or seven can win it before the player who is the, the world number one. It is not necessary that I will have the world number one winning this tournament. You will have my answer when this video is over. But it is not only because of his ranking. It is, only, it is also because I just don't like him indoors. I don't like him fast surfaces. And I'm going to reveal the name. Diego Schwartzman. He's on my number 8th place. I, I don't like Diego Schwartzman outside clay. Let's face it. Diego Schwartzman is a clay quarter. He has won three titles during his career. Two of those titles has been on clay. Uh, everything Diego possesses and does so great on clay, he's so much vulnerable outside clay. He's a kind of a Rafa Nadal, but five times worse. What Rafa is so tremendous good on clay, I did a video a couple of days ago about that, 
consistency, stamina, uh, audience, etc. etc. Diego Schwartzman is like Nadal as well, but he's much worse. Nadal, of course, is a much better fast court player than Diego. Diego just doesn't have the serve. He, Diego, you can break his serve and he, he will not break you back. You can hit through him on fast surfaces. He, he just isn't powerful, strong enough on fast surfaces. And he is the player who has entered this tournament last. And let's face it, the most majority of points he has collected this year to deserve his spots, to deserve his spot, is he has collected them on clay. He was in the final in Rome, he was in the semi-final in, uh, in French Open. On fast surfaces, he, he, he was knocked out in the first round of the US Open. He didn't do a deep run in Paris Masters, lost to Medvedev there in quarterfinal. Uh, so I don't have Diego. Diego is... Diego, he... He is here to collect the money, to play three matches, and to take the flight home to back to Argentina and just enjoy his vacation before the 2021 season starts. Let's face it, I don't want to go deeper than so. Uh, on number seven place, I have a player actually who's done a great year. And I've read all the, on the different social medias uh, that people have are having some people, many of the people having him really high and some of you believe he will win the tournament. Me personally, I, I can win the tournament. And like I said, Diego is the only one I will be shocked if he won the tournament. He will not win the tournament. Diego, he needs a miracle to win the tournament. Let's face it. But all the other seven, I will not be shocked if one of the other sevens wins the tournament. Absolutely not. But, I will put in a but here, my tennis friends, all around the world. I will be slightly surprised if this player wins it. Slightly, not huge surprised. And the player I'm thinking about is Andrei Rublev. I have him on my seventh place. You maybe think, oh Inter, you're crazy man. This dude has won five tournaments this year. Most of all the other players. No one has won more tournaments than him. This year, 2020. But guys, 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 he has won five Small tournaments, 500 class and 250 tournaments. Andrei Rublev has never won a big tournament in his life. You know that? Diego Schwartzman and Andrei Rublev are the only players of these eight contenders that, have, that they have won, they never have won a big title in their careers. All the other six has won slams or masters or ATP through final titles. These two has never won a Master 1000 title, or a Slam, or a ATP Tour Final title in, the, in their lives. So, Andrei Rublev can win it, absolutely. He can do it. I will not be shocked if he wins it, but I will be slightly surprised. Look, you know what? I need to see it to believe it. He has not even made a semi-final appearance in a major at Rublev. I think he has three quarterfinals appearances during his career at Rublev. He has never made it to a semi-final major. He has never made it to a, uh, to a final Master 1000. Uh, uh, he, he doesn't have a final in a Master uh, event under Rublev. So, uh, uh, I, I, I will not have him higher than this. He's on our seventh place. He can win it. I will not be shocked. But I will be slightly surprised. I need to see it to believe it. On number six place, uh, I have Dominic Thiem. Uh, the finalist from last year, we all know he was in the final last year, lost to Stefanos Tsitsipas in that final. He did a great run last year. He, let's face it, uh, Dominic Thiem's best surfaces are clay and outdoor hard courts. Yeah, I know he has improved his game indoors. Like I said, he was in the final last year uh, and uh, was a very close final against Tsitsipas. He won the first set, I remember, last year in the tiebreak and I lost the second and third set and defeated great players in that tournament last year. Dominic Thiem played really, really good tennis in this event last year, defeated Djokovic in the semifinal. I remember, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but 
I, but I'm not, be, I've not been crazy in love in WWE this year. He has won only one title, uh, and that was US Open, of course, uh, a very huge, big title. His first major title during uh, in his career so far. But I just, he is coming into this tournament with, with injury concerns. He has not been really super consistent since US Open. He was in. Lost in quarterfinal French Open. That was that was clay against Diego in five setter. Uh, then didn't do a great run in Paris. Lost in the quarterfinal against Andre Rublev there, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not not, not in Paris. In Vienna, in Vienna, in, in his home country tournament, uh, lost to Andre Rublev in Vienna. Uh, it it is not any shame to lose against Rublev, who has been really firing in smaller events this year under Rublev, but uh, he's not sure. For me, Dominic team is like a Christmas present. You know when you give pr Christmas presents to, to li little children? And they don't know what they will get. They are so excited. And they, they are open the package and they, uh, they, are, they, they are waiting. What will my mom or dad or, or whatever give me? And they don't have any clue what will be inside that package. Dominic team is the, exactly the same player for me. I never know when, where I have this guy. And he's not alone, by the way. We have other dudes who are, who are the same. Uh, Stefan Sitsbas is the same as well. Uh, Zverev is the same. Medvedev is the same. Who believed that? Not who, but uh, Medvedev didn't make any single final during his, the, the entire season this year, 2020. And then he all of a sudden went on and won Paris like, uh, la last week. That was not a shock. He, he has won Masters before. But... My point is that he didn't make a final since Shanghai Master 1000 title he won last year. And uh, three, 13 months later, he made, uh, he made a final in Paris and won it. So, Dominic team is not alone when it comes to you opening Christmas presents and you know what you will get. But Dominic team is just a hit or miss player for me. You don't know what you have him. And another thing that makes me concerned is his injuries. He has had some bad blisters the last couple of weeks uh, he pulled out of paris because he he had huge blisters and we don't know his, his health we don't know how his health is coming into this tournament and we know that he has really long swings both forward and back and he doesn't always have the let just let's face it uh, indoors uh, uh, conditions are not his best absolutely the best surface. For me, his best surface is clay and outdoor hard court, not indoor hard court. But, uh, uh, can he win the tournament? Absolutely. Will I be surprised? No. To be quite honest, I would be more surprised if Rublev won it than Team. Because Team has won big titles before. Like I said, he has won US Open, his first um, Grand Slam title during his career so far. He has won Masters. He won Indian Wells last year. So, uh, I would not be uh, sh uh, shocked or surprised if teams win it, but I just don't. I'm not crazy in love in team at the moment. I just am not. That's because of his lack of consistency level the last couple of weeks and months after US Open and his injury concerns with his blisters. I don't know how his injury is in that bl blister and how he will uh, uh, perform because he. He has said that it is this, it is uh, bothering him big times. So I have Dominic Team on number sixth place. On number fifth place, uh, I have my tennis friends Alexander Sasha Zverev. And some of you maybe are surprised why I have him on num on on my number fifth place. But let's face it, guys, the place from eighth to fifth place are the place I don't believe will go to the semifinals. Uh, you are getting the point of obviously reasons. Uh, so, Alexander Sasha Zverev has won two titles this year. Both have been indoors in his home country, Cologne. But Alexander Sasha Zverev, we not should forget, he has not won a big title in two years. Actually, this tournament, where he won it in back in 2018. Alexander Sasha Zverev 
he has not been consistent in big tournaments. He has made finals, yes, he won in fi he was in final in US Open, lost a very epic close one against Dominic Team, was only two points away of winning that title in US Open, winning his first ever major title. He was in final in Paris, but we all saw what Medvedev did to him. He just weared him down physically and, and mentally. Should I go with Zverev now? Yeah, he has a huge serve. Zverev can take out Zverev really can take the racket out of anybody's hands with that serve. His serve is really unreal. Uh, and his second serve works better indoors. I don't know why. Maybe because of less wind and things like that. Outdoors he just does more double faults. Indoors he seems to really... He, does, he, he has not done all 10 double faults in this indoor tournament. Both in those two tournaments in Cologne and in Paris. So all... He has cut down those double faults tremendously. But look, just play two close sets with Zverev, like Medvedev did in that Paris final, and then Zverev will be, he will be mentally checked out and physically. I just don't trust in Zverev's stamina. I just don't do it. Uh, Zverev's chance is to win his matches fast in two sets, and which he can do with that serve. He, if he serves over 70% first serves in, and he can do that a lot of times with his big, he's a big dude, uh, you cannot take your teeth into his service games. Just ask Rafa Nadal. He knows that bloody well. He had so much trouble with that in his match against Zverev in Paris. So, uh, but if Zverev, the thing with Zverev, he serves really huge the first set. He really does. But after the first set, his first percentage of first serves, they go down. And when they go down, obviously the second serve is not as good as the first serve. You will see more breakpoint opportunities. And when you will see more breakpoint opportunities, you will get the dude into the rallies. And plays like Djokovic and plays like Medvedev, because the Tokyo group is... It will be about Zverev, Medvedev and Djokovic. We all know that Diego is here to collect the money and play three matches and take the flight home to Argentina. So I don't think... I, I truly... I, I have a feeling that Diego will lose all his three matches. That is my feeling. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe he will win one. But he will for sure not uh, progress from his group, Diego. He will not do it. But the Tokyo group will be about these players. Zverev, Medvedev and Djokovic. Two of these three... It, 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 will, it will be a fight from, between these three who will make it to the semifinals of these three. Diego, we all know, he is, uh, will not be contender to go to the semifinal. So, but Djokovic, he can hurt Zverev's second serve. Bo and Medvedev too. Medvedev, we all saw Medvedev, he break Zverev's serve four times in that Paris final. So, Zverev is in my fifth place, he can win the tournament, and he has won this tournament before in 2018. And I don't have... Good guys, if we look at the past history, we have had four different champions in four different years. 2016, Andy Murray. 2017, Grigor Dimitrov. 2018, Alexander Sasha Zverev. 2019, Stefan Tsitsipas. And I have a feeling that we probably, maybe, will have a new champion in 2020 as well for the fifth straight year. So I, I just don't think that Zverev he will win this tournament for the second time. Not this year, at least. In the future, absolutely that is possible, but not this year. I just I just don't fancy his uh, stamina. I don't fancy his consistency uh, after you have played with him over one or two or two hours. Like I said, play two close, two close sets with him and you will most likely get him in the third set. Uh, you will wear him, wear him down like Medvedev did in the final. So Zverev is on my fifth place. He can win it absolutely. I will not be surprised if he won it. Like I have him on my fifth place so he can absolutely win it. These are all elite players. Uh, so man anyway, I don't have him going to the semifinal. On my fourth place, in this list, I have uh, Rafael Nadal. Yeah, guys, I think Rafael Nadal will make it to that semi-final. Yes. Rafael Nadal, he is in the group where... Rafa's, what is Rafa's biggest weakness 
outside clays, especially indoors. His serve gets exposed. He doesn't come away with a weak serve outside clay. We all know that I talked about this before. His serve is not the best serve in the top 10 in the world. So I just... Uh, no, I'm sorry, I will not have Rafa Nadal on... Uh, Zverev was on... Uh, I will not have Rafa Nadal on my... F yeah, Rafa Nadal... Uh, uh, no, Rafa Nadal is on my fourth place. On my fourth place, I will have Stefan Tsitsipas, actually. Not Rafa Nadal. Uh, Stefan Tsitsipas. And the reason why I have Stefan Tsitsipas on my fourth place, I think that Stefan Tsitsipas, he can make it to that semi-final. I really think. The defending champion, I don't think he will win it. That was a long time we saw a, defend, uh, a player defend the title here in the ATP 2 finals. I believe Djokovic is the last player to do it back in 2015. Uh, so I don't think that Stefanos will... Stefanos is coming into this tournament as well with injury concerns. He, he said that he has, he, has, uh, he has blown up an injury, an old injury uh, in French Open and he's not playing any consistent tennis he's definitely not hitting his back as good as he did in this time around last year I remember his back was just outrageous La in this year's tournament last year he did barely any mistakes against Federer in the sem semi-final and against Dominic Thiem in the final and he's not hitting that back as good as consistent and as sharp this time around but he has the serve he can do a lot of damage with plus with serve plus forehand uh, I believe uh, he definitely can defeat Drublev in his group and he definitely can defeat Dominic Thiem in his group uh, Stefan Stitipas so uh, I feel that uh, and uh, against Nadal Stefanos he's not having the greatest head-to-head -head. Yeah, Nadal has a 5-1 head-to-head against Stefanos but he can defeat Nadal as well that is not impossible Nadal is not impossible to defeat outside clay. We all know that. Uh, it is not easy to defeat him because of what kind of consistency level he brings into the game, Nadal, in each and every single point. Every single point is extremely important for Rafa Nadal, but it is not impossible for Stefanos to defeat Nadal as well. Uh, with that serve forehand, uh, with, the plus for, with the serve plus game. But he definitely has great chances of defeating both Rublev and team uh, Stefan Tsitsipas. Uh, and so I believe that from the longer group, Nadal and Stefan Tsitsipas will make it through. So I have Stefanos on my number third, fourth place. I believe he will make it to the semi-final. On, on my number third place, I have Rafael Nadal. Maybe of you are maybe are surprised. Why do I have him this high? You know, guys, I have him. I I having him to go through to the semi-final, and that's why he's on my third place. Uh, the reason why I ha I have him, he has some dudes on his group. What is Rafa's absolute? How can you hurt Rafa Nadal outside clay? How can you hurt him? How can you take it to Rafa Nadal? How can you hit through to Rafa Nadal? Big serving, guys. What Zverev did to him in Paris? What did Rafa say after the Paris after the Zverev loss in Paris? He was serving bombs, and these players he has on his on his group, they are not as good of a server like Zverev. Rublev has a great serve; he has improved his serve, but he doesn't have any great second serve, and he isn't. He does his serve is not as great as Zverev in my opinion. Rublev's Rublev's serve is not as great as Medvedev's, so Rafa can take his teeth into Rublev's service games. I believe Rafa can hurt Rublev's serves. Rafa can return Rublev's serve. Rafa can outlast Z Rublev from the baseline. Rafa can take, he, he can wear Rublev down. Especially he can take those teeth into Rublev's serve. The same is with Stefan Sitzbach. Stefan Sitzbach has a great serve, but not as great as Sasha Zverev, in my opinion. And not as great as Medvedev as well, probably. Uh, but so, Rafa, he can make it to a semi-final because he, those dudes he has on his group, they are not as good of a server like Medvedev and like uh, Sasha Zverev. So Rafa will have opportunities to take his teeth to these dudes' service games. And when the rally is on, Rafa, he can give a hell to all the players in the world, even outside clay. Not as, not as a 
bloody and huge hell as it gives gives them on clay, but he can he can give them tough times even outside clay when the rally is on. But Rafa is more vulnerable even on, in the rallies because you can hit through him and you can come to the net and make winners and things like that. We all know that. But I just feel that Rafa Nadal, he has all the chances to defeat Rublev, to defeat uh, Tsitsipas and to defeat team as well. Uh, so I have Rafa Nadal on my number third place. Rafa, he won two matches last year. He only won, he only lost one. It was against Alisson Sasha Zverev. And he had really bad luck because he lost against Sasha Zverev last year in straight sets. He, if he had won one set against Sasha Zverev, he would win in that semi-final. So, Rafa Nadal, and he's coming fresh, he's, I don't think he will be tired, uh, and he will be super motivated as well, because he has never won this tournament, he has been in two finals before, 2010 and 2013, if I'm not mistaken, lost to his two chief rivals, Federer and Djokovic. So, I have Rafa Nadal on my third place, I think he will go to the semi-final. On my second place, I have... The player who has won this event five times, and the player I'm talking about is the world number one, the end world number one, who has won this, who has been ending the year as the world number one for six times, and equal Pistol Pete's record. And the player I'm talking about, you probably know that by now, Novak Djokovic. I think Novak Djokovic indoors, he really likes indoor, indoors uh, conditions. Uh, probably he's the best indoor player in the world. Not probably he is, of all these eight players. Uh, it, Novak Djokovic is not the best player in the world when it comes to rain, wind, and things like that. Indoors, none of these things exist. We don't have rain, we don't have wind, uh, we don't have a breeze, you name it. And uh, Novak Djokovic likes indoor conditions. But the reason I don't have him higher than on my second place is just... I don't feel that Novak Djokovic is as good of a tennis player after the pandemic like he was before the pandemic. Uh, yeah, he won, I know he has won titles, he won Cincinnati, he won Rome, but he didn't win them with convincingly way, in my opinion. He was struggling in those wins and you can hurt him. Uh, and I, I believe he will go to that final. I, I would not be shocked if he... Guys, look look what I'm saying now. I would not be shocked if he even don't progress from his group. He has players who can both. He, he has two players on his group who can hurt him, both Medvedev and Zverev. They really, really can hurt him. Both of these two players have defeated him in the past, not in majors and things like that. But this is not any major, but they can hurt him. Trust me. Mo Zverev has defeated him multiple times. Medvedev has defeated him multiple times. But I just can't go against him. I think he will be super motivated. I think he will. He wants to win it for the sixth time. But I don't think he will win it. He has not won it since 2015 in five years. But he can definitely go to a final. I think he, can, he will defeat Diego, who he, he owns. I think he's five love in that attack as Diego. He, he can defeat Sasha Zverev. Absolutely, even though the Sasha has defeated him two times, but he has defeated him three times, I believe, Djokovic, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, he, and he can defeat also Medvedev, even though Medvedev has also defeated him a couple of times, two times, but he, uh, Djokovic has defeated him more than two times. Uh, so, this, look guys, this is not easy. They are all elite players and they are all in the top eight in the world. I just know one thing, the Tokyo group will be a fight between Medvedev, Zverev and Djokovic. I think Djokovic will come through to the semi-final. That's my feeling. I think that Djokovic will come through. And on my first place, maybe this will come as a surprise for you. I'm taking out my nose here. I, he can for sure be knocked out in the group as well. And the player I'm talking about is Daniel Medvedev, who I was super impressed from him in Paris. But uh, these players, you don't know what you have. In Medvedev is also like a Christmas present. You open the present, you don't know what you will get. Uh, we have many of these players, Medvedev, Zverev, Team, Tsitsipas, you big... I just want, I just know one thing, the player who will not disappoint me and will deliver is Nadal. Even though the Nadal is not as strong indoors like he's outdoors, hardcore and especially clay, I know that he will not disappear, I know that he will not defeat himself. When he loses, somebody, someone will defeat him. Someone, someone will serve bomb. Someone will do a bunch of winners 
20, 25 plus winners and take him out, he will not take himself out, Nadal. But players like Team, Titipas, Medvedev, Sasha, even Djokovic, especially the fourth I mentioned, they can take themselves out without somebody out, other doing that because they can beat themselves out. Nadal will not beat himself. Anyway, I have Medvedev on my first place. I just think that he really, his ball stays so low on this court. He, he has a huge serve. He is really short tolerant. He has stamina. He, he has not done a great year. He's coming here with a lot of energy. Last year, he did a super great year, won four titles, but he was exhausted when he came into this tournament and lost all of his three matches in, in the, this event last year. I don't think he will lose all of, this, all of his three matches this year. I truly don't think so. And I think he will come to this, he will, he, maybe he will, will win this group. Maybe I come on the first place and Djokovic take the second place. We all know how this uh, how this works. The second place plays against the sec the first place plays against the second place in the other group, and vice versa. So I have a feeling that Medvedev will top this group on the first place, and Djokovic will be on the second place. I have Sasha and Diego being knocked out. On the other group, I have Nadal winning his group, and I think Tsitsipas will take the second the second spot and then we will have a semi-final match between I believe I think that we'll have a semi-final between Djokovic and Nadal that is my feeling and I think Djokovic will take Nadal out I just I have to see Nadal defeat Novak Djokovic for the first time since 2013 outside clay it has been seven years since Nadal defeated Djokovic outside clay and I have to see it to believe it so I think Djokovic takes out Nadal in the semi-final and I think Medvedev takes out Tsitsipas in the other semi-final and I think we will have a final between Novak Djokovic and Daniel Medvedev and I have Daniel Medvedev defeating Novak Djokovic in that final. Maybe we'll see a scenario where Djokovic defeats Medvedev in a group stage that is, I would not be surprised if that happens and then in the final Medvedev defeats Novak Djokovic. That is a possible scenario. Look guys, everything can happen in this tournament. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I think that all of these seven players can win it. Uh, even Rublev, even though that I don't think Rublev will win it, to be quite honest. I am more confident that the other six will win it. One of the other six. I just, I need to see Rublev winning a big title before I predict him winning it. That's why I have Rublev as on my seventh place. I just don't have him high. But the other six, I would not be surprised if any of the other six wins it. But I will be shocked if Diego wins it, and I will be slightly surprised if Rublev wins it. But the other six, I will not be surprised in any of the other six wins it. So I will go on my list once again, if you guys don't remember it. On my eighth place, Diego Schwarzman. On my seventh place, Andrew Rublev. On my sixth place, Dominic Team. On my fifth place, Alexander Sasha Zverev. On my fourth place, Stefan Tsitsipas. On my third place, Rafael Nadal. On my second place, Novak Djokovic. On my first place, Daniel Medvedev. I have a feeling we will have a new champion on this need to ATP Tour Finals for the fifth straight year, like we have had in these in the four uh, past years in the past. So, guys, this was a long video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I am looking forward to, to this. Everything can happen, really. I think that the winner most likely will be from the sixth place to the first place. I don't believe in Rublev and I don't believe in Diego Schwarzman. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Take care and bye-bye.